Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. End of the weekend here is upon us. Monday comes up rather quickly, doesn't it? Hopefully uh, everyone had a good weekend out there. It is 9.49 in the p.m. out here across the West Coast in Northern California. That is where the uh, one of the latest quakes here. Uh, 2.1, nothing big there across the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. It looks like it's... Uh, yeah, exactly into the the deeper area there of the Cascadia, 13 miles deep into this region. Um, wanting to see if we got any trimmer counts out there because of a uh, this little uptick. A uh, little bit more down here across the southern end, underneath the southern coast here of Oregon, also northern California, seeing uh, an uptick there in slow slip events. 440 epicenters for a total. Uh, so a little bit up north and uh, some down south. That uh, been, it's been going on here for a little while like that. Most of it's been up north here, but it looks like we're starting to switch back down to the southern end, so we'll watch that closely. Uh, for Washington area, a ha handful of smaller quakes up there. I don't see anything big. Uh, I do want to double check the volcanoes, you know, just, just in case we have like a major swarm going on, you know, because as of late, they have not been reporting a lot of the activity out here. So there's, uh, that's definitely one. Is this current data? Let me see here. Shows the 13th of UTC time. Yeah, that's, that's right on time here. There's definitely one earthquake and a couple other smaller ones there in the background. Uh, let's check out the afternoon time period. A couple more. Nothing big. Just periodic, small, very small earthquake activity. Uh, really nothing being reported there across Mount St. Helens. Up around Mount Rainier, we can double check that as well. Uh, see what's going on. I'm not going to spend a lot here on the volcano activity tonight. Uh, just unless something changes here, we'll periodically check it. Even here, you know, you can still see some earthquake activity stirring up. Those little bitty spikes are indeed earthquakes. The previous date, which is a morning and afternoon time period, as you can see, looks like some earthquake activity. That's what I see out here anyway. Uh, nothing being reported there across Mount Rainier, aside from one earthquake way down there this afternoon, away from the volcano. Uh, Bay Area got one more earthquake, it looks like, here on the Hayward Fault. Uh, that was this morning, it looks like, for a 2.2. Aside from that clear like volcanic field up there, that's uh, geothermal fields, uh, geothermal plants creating energy up there. A lot of earthquake activity gets produced during the process. Uh, the rest of California here, what do we got around Long Valley Super Volcano here? A couple twos out there this afternoon. Uh, that's actually south here of the Long Valley Supervolcano, which is uh, up here in this region. Yes, Southern California has a supervolcano. Not as big as Yellowstone, Yellowstone, but it's definitely a uh, decent-sized supervolcano. A couple smaller earthquakes there to the south. I believe those are just stress-related there with, uh, all, with all the pressurization going on out here across the West Coast recently. We have yet to have a big release in pressure. Uh, no telling when it's going to hit. There's one earthquake in the last hour as well, just off the southern branch there of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, as far as 2.5 and above goes, nothing down there across the San Andreas, aside from a couple earthquakes up north there around the, uh, just outside the Long Valley Super Volcano. Nothing showing up here through Idaho or Yellowstone. Now, I guess tomorrow's not a federal holiday, uh, so they will be in office tomorrow. Um, so anything that does take place here through the weekend, they'll, uh, I'm sure they'll look through it and uh, add it onto the map because there was a, a handful of quakes out here, at least three of them in the last 24 hours. Nothing big, uh, but most of the time these twos and some smaller quakes will get reported, just not during the weekends. Uh, oil fields of Texas there, still rocking and rolling. Nothing new. New Madrid seismic zone. That's one little earthquake there from last night. So let's see what we got going on here for a world view of things. I like looking at this earthquake 3D globe because you can see pretty much uh, where some areas of interest are. And it looks like we're getting some renewed activity up here across the Kamchatka Trench. That started off this morning, but it seems uh, like it's picked up quite a bit there. Uh, I see uh, a couple fives out here. Some larger activity there in Alaska as well with a four-pointer. Uh, so that northern section up here is starting to move again. Uh, latest quake shows a 3.1 into the Philippines area. Uh, looks like that's dying down a little bit. There's a lot of red color rings there indicating some older movement. 
One area that has not filled in yet with all this with all this movement happening is the Nankai Trough out here. Uh, from Japan all the way down here to the uh, Taiwan area. We definitely want to watch that. The Nankai Trough sits right uh, up here across the south coast here of Japan. Uh, New Zealand, uh, they had a 4.6 there along the Kerbadec Trench. It looks like earlier today, a 3.3 just off South Island area. A um, little bit of movement going on here, but uh, it's actually gone pretty quiet out here across this region uh, in the last couple days. But... Uh, I guess we'll just kind of keep an eye on things here, see how it plays out. Some uptick going on across the South America area. And also down there across the South Sandwich Trench with a 4.9 uh, moderate earthquake activity. Uh, let's take a look here at the Curl Cam Chat Cup here. Getting some southward migration here as well, uh, which is the latest one actually, away from the main area where the 8.8 .8 struck back here in uh, July. Uh, 5.6, six miles deep. Although that's not the newest one. The, it looks like the latest one here, 4.7 down here off the coast of Japan uh, into the Japan Trench a little bit. So just watch the Nankai Trough there. I'm, I'm waiting on that to move there in a, in a big fashion, a big way. A little bit of activity around the sea, uh, the uh, Mediterranean region, 4.4 outside of Greece, and a more recent four-pointer. Let's see what we got going on there for smaller activity. Yeah, Turkey's starting to swarm up there again, it looks like. Some twos and threes. That's just been an odd deal. It'll go through quiet spells, and then all of a sudden we'll just get a whole bunch of swarming going on. And this is just um, aftershock activity from a six-pointer that stirred up here a couple months ago. But I, I still think with what's been going on out here recently, there's um, gotta it's got to be leading to something bigger. You guys remember that Santorini earthquake swarm there months back? Yeah, that nothing ever materialized from that in terms of a volcano or a bigger quake. Um, but there's just been a lot of uh, suspicious, like, elevated swarming going on out there across that area. Uh, I don't, I don't know exactly where it's leading, but we do got to watch it. All right, let's see here. There's a deep quake out there. Uh, looks like towards the Java Trench region. Nothing. Uh, what was our biggest earthquake here today? Let's see what we got. Uh, it goes to the 5.7 there in the Philippines. That was a little bit of northward migration here from that activity in the last couple of days down south here. So um, nothing else. Yeah, that was a pretty strong earthquake, by the way. 5.7 around a heavily populated area as well. Uh, fortunately, the pager systems are all in the green, but it uh, was felt quite strongly in the area. As uh, far as any newer migration out there, uh, let's see here. It does look like there's a, a decent amount of aftershock activity from that 5.7. See that? A bunch of threes, some fours. Uh, I'll just keep an eye on that. The latest quake, though, shows a 3.1, a little bit further down south there, where the uh, uh, seven pointer struck here recently. May not, be, uh, may not be done yet out there across the uh, Philippine region. All right, uh, let's see if we got anything else going on. Space weather activity, of course, our typical blackout every 24 hours. I seem to catch it. <laughs> That's why there's no data coming in. Uh, as you can see here in the last 24 hours, got some sea flare activity, crackling and sizzling a little bit here on the sun. Uh, we do have a uh, couple different sunspots here that are, it looks like they're growing in terms of complexity. I forgot to change mine on the live stream, so I will do that. Uh, the threat levels jumping up slightly, 40% chance there for an M flare, 5% for X flare activity. And uh, a number of the sunspots, they do look like they're growing, so we'll watch those as well for some possible further stronger flares. Um, Aurora activity, it is still elevated, just about 700 kms a second there, uh, 689 to be exact. Uh, but everything's being suppressed here. Look at that. Really no aurora activity because of the BT northward tilt there amongst everything. BZ and the BT component there. Uh, so I don't expect that to... Uh, I don't expect the auroras to kick up unless we get a change in that department. So uh, that's looks like the door shut right there for uh, the aurora viewing. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, anything else going on? Just wanted to keep this a short and simple update. Current outlook, just general thunderstorm activity out there across uh, certain portions. Really nothing big coming up. Uh, let me bring this back here. Uh, we do have a decent low pressure system here.
going to bring some uh, beneficial rain here to Northern California and my neck of the woods here. Man, I'm hoping uh, I, I'm hoping that we get some decent rainfall. This is a GFS model. Uh, I want to check out the ECMWF model here. These guys show roughly about the same, maybe a little bit more inland moisture there across the Sacramento Valley. Uh, precipitation accumulation rates there will be um, decent. Certain areas around Clusa and Glen County there should could see uh, around two inches or higher. Uh, but that looks like it's over towards the western area of them of those counties, maybe up in the mountains. Either way, look at that. A lot of rain across California, including some snow up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. That's beautiful. Definitely uh, welcomed. Let's take a look here at... Uh, back out here for a second. We're going to go over here to the uh, North America region, and we're going to look at pressures out here and see what we got for long-term trends. Right now we have a super deep trough here across the West Coast. That's going to stir up. And then the pattern here looks like... Um, uh, almost looks like high pressure wanted to build in across the west coast, uh, but that's getting scooted out by another low pressure. And what? And then uh, what do we got here? Yeah, I don't like that. I'm hoping this changes there. That, that's uh, I, I get it. It's still early in the rainy season here for us, but um, it shows some de decent uh, ridging out there across the west coast. Probably some decent troughing here across the east. That's uh, likely when we'll see some cooler weather out there for those folks. Um, and although right there looks like maybe some uh, a little taste of fall as we head towards um, next weekend but uh, anyway look at that getting all mixed up out here there's no stuck dominant patterns out here which is good a little bit of high pressure is okay for a little bit I just don't want it all winter uh, I don't want to be put back in a drought out here but uh, hopefully things will get mixed up there and we'll uh, keep the storm door open here for the West Coast. All right, quick glance here at uh, any activity across uh, Southern California. Since I've been yakking, we've had two earthquakes, a 1.7 on the San Jacinto Fault Zone, also a 1.6 up here off the uh, Red Mountain Fault there south of Santa Barbara. So a little bit of uptick going on. And as I say here, what have we got? That uh, little earthquake on Anza, I believe, is going to be this 1.7 at 2155. I think that matches that time period. 2155. Yes, perfectly. So that's the 1.7 showing up there on that graph. Uh, a little earthquake there in the Philippines, it looks like. But uh, as I've said here, you know, anything can happen at any given time. Just because it's quiet right now uh, doesn't mean that uh, it's you know completely the things are you know on this well they're on a standstill but it doesn't mean that nothing's going to happen i mean we could see a big earthquake tonight it could could be anywhere out here there's a lot of shuffling of the plates here recently california still has yet to move someone did ask me uh i did see a couple comments there asking why there's so much earthquake activity out in the western pacific compared to the eastern pacific right well, these are all sub subduction zones out here, right? So you got the general stress model of the Pacific Plate. A lot of subduction zones there from uh, Kamchatka area down through the Mariana Trench. Uh, certain regions around Papua New Guinea. You got the Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench, Hikarangi subduction zone. Now, if these arrows were pointing this fashion up against the North American Plate, then we'd be talking about the West Coast scene, you know, regular large earthquakes all the time like we see over here across Japan and Philippines. But because of the plate boundary out here, we got, you know, the transform boundary, the San Andreas Fault, um, that is sliding past each other, but not directly at a a huge amount of slip compared to the subduction zones. The slip rate out here is way higher compared to the San Andreas Fault. but And that's why we don't get, you know, a lot of earthquake activity all the time. But, you know... It, there's been a, a lot of time that has passed for earth, for earthquake activity to happen soon. Uh, the amount of strain that's built up out here across the West Coast is, uh, I'm, it's got to be close. It's got to be getting close, folks. But yeah, so transform boundary. No, the subduction zone up here is the um, um, Cascadia subduction zone, um, and how it gets its pre how it gets the pressure underneath here. We got the Gordon Ridges strike slip boundary. 
Uh, this is a spreading seafloor center. And overall, you know, the, if you look at that North American plate here, uh, it's kind of going in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction here. And um, it, it's got its uh, processes there. Nothing like over here, but, uh, you know, that's another area of concern as far as the Cascadia goes. Anyway, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a wonderful rest of the Sunday night. Um, was there another one that came in here, it looks like? Nah. Yes, there was. <laughs> Literally three earthquakes since I've been uh, doing the update. A little point nine up there around the riverside. So just be on guard here, folks. Don't want to jinx it. Have a good night. We'll see you guys out here in the morning for the uh, Monday morning update. Take care.